Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It is uh, just after eight in the morning and I'm trying to get a chance to talk to you before all of the commotion starts at my house. Um, uh, if you have been watching for a little while, you might know that I, my family and I moved into a new house in May of this year and uh, we're just having some stuff done before winter and that involves a lot of noise, I think. Um, there's gonna be some concrete poured today. You can tell I was in a hurry. My hair's all over the place. We'll just have to pretend it's fine. Um, yes, so there's concrete being poured outside later today. There's a lovely gentleman coming to, to have my bathrooms and I haven't cut off all the ends on my, or not a blouse that I'm wearing today. Um, Yes, let's start with that. Uh, today I am wearing, just like a professional podcaster, uh, today I am wearing my Ornata blouse. This is a blouse, uh, a design by Tati Lutzak, who's a Ukrainian designer living in the Netherlands. It's based on sort of some traditional embroidered Ukrainian blouses, which I love. Uh, and I think my sweater turned out just great. Um, I got lots of compliments on it when I was in Knit City, which I'll talk about next. Um, I will just tell you that I knit this sweater out of um, Lily and Pine yarn in their Rose, I believe, sock base, which has some cashmere in it. So it's very sweet and soft. And I used the, hmm, cannot remember what my main color was, Sand Dollar, maybe? I will, I will put the colors right here <laughs> that I used. Um, but I'm really happy with it. And if you're really curious about any of the designs I've made, I try and keep my Ravelry page pretty up to date. And my Ravelry page um, is under me. My name on Ravelry is Jolene, J-O-L-I-N-E. So nothing fancy. Uh, let's get started with uh, what I've been up to. Two weeks ago, uh, around the time I posted my last episode, I was in uh, Vancouver for Knit City. Knit City was a ton of fun. We were, I went with my husband's cousin uh, and we had a great time. We did a lot of visiting with um, friends and family and uh, getting around a little bit. So I spent some time at Knit City and some time just visiting and getting around. Um, I did see the lecture on Friday night, which was done by Stephanie Pro McPhee, who you might know as the Yarn Harlot. She talked about uh, knitters during the pandemic and it was really interesting to hear um, some of her thoughts on how people used craft in a time of, of really great stress. Um, and my favorite uh, thing that she said, uh, which was at the very end, was that for many of us, knitting um, wasn't a hobby, it wasn't a craft, it was, we thought of our knitting more like we think of a friend. Uh, and I, that really sort of resonated with me. So I, if you're like me and you think of your knitting as a friend, um, you can find great solace and comfort and humor, hopefully, <laughs> in your knitting. Uh, but let me show you what I picked up at Knit City. Um, there's a few things, I'll be honest with you. I picked up a sweater's worth of yarn for a friend of mine. I will try and pop the picture in here. She was unable to attend because she was sick during um, the weekend of Knit City, so she couldn't come along. Um, but I did do some virtual shopping for her and I found her these beautiful yarns from, um, oh, the name is on the tip of my brain. Midknit, Midknit Cravings. Uh, they are dyers out of Saskatchewan. And um, I found these lovely yarns for her so that she can make a striped sweater by Andrew Mowry. And she was really happy with them and I think that they'll make a lovely sweater. Um, so that was some personal shopping I did for a dear friend of mine. Uh, and let me show you some of the other things I got. Uh, let's start with the paper stuff first. Um, one of my favorite booths to visit is um, Long Way Homestead, which is a uh, oh, lovely woman named Anna. She raises sheep in Manitoba. She has her own mill where she makes uh, yarns from both her sheep and from sheep um, sort of all over uh, Western Canada. She will drive around and collect the fleeces and, and make um, beautiful yarns out of all of these uh, sheep that are raised in um, mostly I think Saskatchewan and Manitoba. 
and that fleece would otherwise have been wasted, wouldn't have been used. So she's a really, really interesting person. You should definitely follow her. Um, she has a book coming out about Canadian wool and the wool industry in Canada, if you're interested in that sort of thing. But she um, puts out a calendar. So I got her calendar and each month, she talks about a different breed of sheep. Um, so I am very excited about that. And uh, right, so her book is actually advertised right here. It's called Sheep, Shepherd and Land, Stories from the Small Farms Reinvigorating Canadian Wool. That is going on my Christmas list. So I got her calendar from Long Way Home and I got a skein of yarn. Uh, so this is, um, that's her logo. And she'll have all sorts of different breeds yarn um, from breeds that she raises or breeds uh, that live sort of near or around her. This is a Targi 2-ply DK. It's really soft. And it says grown and milled in Saskatchewan slash Manitoba. And it has 235 meters or 100 grams, which is your standard DK. So I'm really looking forward to casting this on. Um, and I will probably be knitting this. This is the Wesley hat. This is one of the patterns by uh, Tin Can Knits. And if you got into the marketplace early, they were handing out um, a certain number of free patterns um, of this hat. And so I was lucky enough to pick one up. So, so I picked up this yarn to knit this hat. So that's exciting. Um, so that, that was, I guess, a couple stops. Uh, while I was talking to the lovely ladies at Tin Can Knits, uh, I can't get enough of them. Like not only are their patterns really clever and um, lovely and sort of elegant, um, they're, they're usually quite simple, but really beautiful. So Tin Can Knits patterns are so clever. They are, often have a very simple, um, elegant motive. Uh, so for this, for example, this one is cables down the front, uh, but uh, they do it in such a, a lovely way um, that it looks good on everybody. And you will see um, these patterns sized from newborn baby to, let me just tell you what this pattern's range is. Um, it goes to 6XL. So if you're thinking about what kind of a measurement that is, that means we're looking at a chest measurement of a finished sweater of 70 inches. So that is a generous, uh, range of sizes for a beautiful pattern. This one is called Wander. It's from their new collection that just came out. I think it's called Lazy Sundays. And uh, so I picked that up. Uh, and if you're gonna pick up a pattern from the lovely, lovely uh, ladies at the Tin Can Knits booth, then you have to pick up some yarn to make that sweater. So I wandered over to um, Ancient Arts Actually, I looked around a lot. It was hard for, I'm gonna be dumping stuff on the floor because I have a lot of things to get through. Um, there's a lot of yarn vendors at, at um, Knit City and I was looking specifically for some sport weight yarn and that is not a common weight, or at least I didn't see a lot of it, but I did find this. Um, this is called Lasco Fine, I'll just show you. It is a base by, oh, my nails are terrible. I apologize. Um, keeping it real on Jolene Nizzola. On So this is an Ancient Arts yarn. Um, ancient Arts are dyers out of uh, Calgary, Alberta. And they do carry some really interesting bases. So this one is the Lasco Fine. And it is Manx Lochten, 25% uh, Manx Lochten and 75% Punta Arenas wool. Um, it's dyed in Canada. This is the denim one color. There's actually there is a denim two, um, but it's really a really interesting like dirty denim kind of color. Like when your jeans get all washed out and faded. So I picked up five skeins of this to make the wander pullover for for myself. Um, so you can see I I stocked up. Um, and surprisingly, so this is listed as a fingering, but it is a heavier fingering. So I think it'll be great for the with this sweater and I really really like the color it's sort of a dirty a dirty blue okay so that was the sweater quantity I picked up and then of course I picked up some other some other odds and ends um I was interested in picking up some spin cycle yarn because I knew that Starlight Knitting Society would be there and they often carry 
yarns um, by Spin Cycle. In fact, the two uh, spinsters I saw walking around the marketplace on Saturday. So I hope they enjoyed the marketplace as well. I have seen them there in previous years. And they had, um, Starlight Knitting Society had a great table of all sorts of different colors. So I picked up two sets of two skeins. Um, often when you're knitting uh, a pattern with this yarn, I find that you need about two skeins usually for accessories, sometimes for sweaters. Uh, for example, the Alpen Glow sweater that I knit recently used two skeins. <clears throat> so I felt like that was kind of a safe quantity. Apologies if you can hear um, activity. Of, if you can hear activity outside my house, we're just gonna have to like work through it, pretend you're um, knitting in a construction zone, I apologize. So I picked up these two <laughs> skeins um, and this is called Cold Comfort. It's dyed in the wool. There, there's uh, fingering base, um, very lovely stuff. And then I also picked up two skeins of, I believe this is called Light, yeah, Light Year. It's super fun. So that's, so I got two sets of two and those are just going into stash for when beautiful patterns come out and construction ends. I'm really sorry but it's gonna have to happen because it's now or when the concrete truck comes, cement truck, and they start pouring stuff. Oh, it's gonna be a noisy day here at Jolene. It's a lot. Earlier in the week, um, they came by and they were jackhammering. So they were jack jackhammering in like this corner of my house. And then they were also jackhammering at the same time in that corner of my house. My house was vibrating. It was not fun. Anyway, we're gonna work through it. So I picked up some Spin Cycle and the last thing I picked up at Knit City uh, was, oh, look at this. It's beautiful. When people talk about yarn babies, they're talking about this, a very large quantity of yarn. Uh, while I was wandering around <clears throat> the marketplace, I saw a tiny little um, sort of old timey suitcase sitting on a table at the Fiber Goddess booth. And I've seen the Fiber Goddess around before. She's not new to me, she's from Alberta. Um, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, she had a whole little basket full of these massive skeins of hand, of handspun. And so I started talking to her about the handspun and she said she loves spinning. It's her sort of peaceful thing that she likes to do. Uh, but she wanted to be able to provide people with the opportunity to buy enough hand spun for a project. Uh, so this, my friends, is 625 yards, almost seven ounces of a fingering weight BFL. It is just beautiful. And after I bought it, I realized <clears throat> it, it's very similar to this, but it is a lot of yarn and I have no idea what it's gonna be. I'm just gonna keep it with me and love it for a little while until I figure out what it wants to be. And I'm thinking maybe uh, Andrew Mowry has a new shifty cardigan coming out um, soon-ish. I'm really sorry if you can hear that. Um, Andrew Mowry has a new shifty cardigan coming out, much like the shifty pullover, but a cardigan. And this might be enough to be the contrast color. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, so fingers crossed and it's going into stash where it's going to be loved and honored and adored um, until it finds its right project. And that is, that's all that I picked up at Knit City. We had a great weekend. It was sort of whirlwind. We flew in Friday, left Sunday. Um, got to say hi to some people that I have seen at other previous Knit Cities. Got to spend some time with my nephew. Um, so it was, it was a great weekend. And if you are thinking about um, yarn festivals to visit, I might encourage you to think about Knit City. It's usually held at the end of September. Um, the th I think the th they're aiming for the third weekend in September. Um, Canada has a new holiday um, on September 30th called Truth and Reconciliation Day, where we um, take time to honor and to reflect on um, a lot of the awful treatment that has happened to particularly indigenous peoples in our country. Um, and so that's a day to honor um, their truths and their stories and the, um, the things that they have been through and to hopefully learn from um, the problems and the, and the mistakes of our past. So um, 
the end of September is sort of out because there is a holiday now in Canada. Um, so I think the third weekend in September is where they're aiming to have Knit City and maybe I will see you near there next year. Let me tell you what I've been working on. Um, so I have finished a few little things. Uh, no, I have not made a pair of jeans, but I did have a pair of jeans that had some um, issues. <laughs> um, just here next to the, the belt loops in the front, I was having some ripping happening. And these jeans aren't that old, but they are worn a lot. So I thought I would try some visible mending. This is my first attempt at visible mending and it's not, it's not great. Uh, if I show it to you from back here, maybe you can see. <laughs> let's let's not get too close. Um, so on both sides, I had to do a bit of uh, weaving and I tried to do some darning. I just used some leftover fingering weight yarns. Um, so I did some on this side and it also had to be done on this side. And the second side was definitely better. I think I just need, to, it just needs practice. But I am kind of happy that I fixed them so I can wear these jeans and not feel like I'm flashing people. Um, and it's just sort of given me some confidence to try it again in the future. I am so sorry. I really didn't think that guy would be here in his little bobcat this morning. Let's keep going. So I did some visible mending um, and I um, didn't do this sort of willy nilly. I um, harnessed the power of the Edmonton Public Library. Um, I don't know about you, but in my community, the Edmonton Public Library is amazing. It has a lot of locations across um, Edmonton. You can order books online to be delivered to the library. They let you know virtually when it's there. I get audiobooks from them all the time. They have really interesting events like uh, last week, a friend and I went to hear Monica Lewinsky talk on online bullying and um, harassment in the internet. Libraries are so great. Uh, and I used my library card to get Visible N Mending, a book by uh, Arona, oh, I cannot say her name, but she's, bo bo her website is B-O-O-K-H-O-U, Buku, I believe. Yes. Um, and she has such great information on punch needle and embroidery um, and Visible Mending. So I got the book out of the library just to sort of give myself some um, confidence in what I was doing. And no, I didn't do a great job, but it gave me the confidence to try again. So that's great. I have finished a couple things since last we met. Uh, I did finish these little socks that I was working on. This is the second pair of the crew socks. Uh, this one is for my other daughter. The leg is just a little bit longer and I have this nice sort of slip stitch detail in the middle of the arch to sort of provide some support. And she will be actually quite excited to get these, which is great because her birthday's on Sunday. So maybe I'll hold off till Sunday and give them to her then. Some socks for my younger daughter. I knit up the October dishcloth by Kitchen Sink Knits. This one is based on Anne of Green Gables uh, and these little, um, braided sections are meant to represent her braids. And I knitted in orange in honor of October, but also because Anne Shirley gets called carrots by the love of her life, Gilbert Blythe. And she's very offended, so offended that she breaks a chalkboard over his head, but it's okay. Cause in the end they get married and live a wonderful, wonderful life together. So this is the October uh, dishcloth from Kitchen Sink Shop. And finally, I finished my Sophie scarf. Now this will probably look different than the last time I saw you. I knit most of a Sophie scarf using two strands of this blue yarn, um, but I didn't have enough and it would have been too short and I was not happy with how it was turning out. So I dove into the stash, I grabbed another little skein of some kiviet I had lying around and I held them together. Reminds me a lot of the denim yarn that I picked up to make that sweater. And this is just, this is a Sophie scarf. It takes about um, 200 yards of a DK weight yarn or double that if you're using thinner yarns held together. Oh my goodness, look at how it turned out. Okay, I'm really happy with this, this little project. I think it's gonna be great in the winter. And I think that if you're looking for something that's like a quick knit as a gift, I would definitely recommend the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knits. You could easily use whatever yarn you have on hand 
it's the kind of pattern that you could easily um, adjust for how much yarn you have. So if you have a little weigh scale, you can weigh your yarn at the beginning. You can keep knitting the increases until you get to half your yarn left and then start decreasing so that you could be sure to make as big a scarf as you can with the yarn that you have. Uh, and this is how big mine is. And it's just a lovely length to wrap around and then just tie. Um, I'm sure I could tie a better box knot if I wasn't looking at myself in reverse. Anyway, it's really cozy and soft. It makes me feel very French or European. Mm. Mm, that looks really good. Okay, so I'm very happy with my Sophie scarf. And that is all I have finished this week. I have been knitting though. Um, not much on these socks. These are some socks I started while I was, uh, I think, away at Knit City, and I maybe put a couple of rounds in the toe, but nothing spectacular. The yarn is by Tiny Human Knits, and it's called Scrappy, Scrappy Socks in the Woods, I think. It's great yarn, it's beautiful. I'm using some leftovers for heels, cuffs, and toes. And that's all I've done on that. Hi, we've moved. Hopefully um, to a place where we can hear concrete people a lot less. This is a living room at the back of my house. Um, we have some mature trees and it's definitely fall. So thanks for coming with me. Um, on October 1st, we started the All Sorts Scarf Knit Along. This is a pattern by me. <laughs> and uh, I put it out a number of years ago and it's a scarf pattern that just uses up small amounts of yarn so little scraps that you have lying around. I am using a bunch of different colors of Recollect which is a Rambouillet yarn by The Farmer's Daughter <clears throat> and I have knit a few sections of it now. The scarf starts out with some garter stitch and then just goes through um, some stocking stitch sections. Here's a pretty little lace pattern. Uh, and then it keeps going. And here's another funny little lace pattern. So, so far, so good. It's a very autumnal scarf, I think, that I've got going on. And uh, I've really been enjoying plugging away at it. It's a knit on the bias, so it does sort of do this sort of diagonal business. Uh, but it's been really fun to knit on. And uh, I hope that you're thinking about joining me for an all sorts knit along. Uh, the first one I knit, I just used scraps of yarn that I had lying around and I used 24 different colors. The pattern gives you instructions for using 24, but that would be very easy to uh, change. So if your scarf was long enough, you could just finish it um, quite easily by knitting another garter stitch section um, and calling it quits. I think I'll be doing that. I don't think I'll be knitting to 24 this time uh, just because I'm looking for a slightly shorter scarf. And that's my all sorts scarf. Um, and it is uh, something I pick up when I have a few moments. The, the knit along for this scarf is going from October 1st to December 1st. So you have lots of time if you'd like to join us. And I think that this would make a great gift. So you could knit it with or without the lace patterns uh, or as many lace patterns or as few as you like. You can use whatever color palette you like, or you could just knit it plain with two colors would be great. That would be really pretty actually. You could do your school colors. You could do your favorite colors. You could do a rainbow of colors. Um, it's very, very adaptable. So maybe you'll think about joining us for the All Sorts Scarf Knit Along. We're using this hashtag on Instagram and I hope I'll see some of your projects popping up. And finally, <clears throat> As of this recording, the first clue of the Stephen West Twists and Turns Mystery Knit Along came out yesterday. And so I have knit <clears throat> a bit of it. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I forgot how much knitting can go into a Stephen West Knit Along. <laughs> uh, clue one is, is not tiny. It's not super difficult and Stephen West does an amazing job of providing you with support in the um, in the form of YouTube videos just like this one where he walks you through every step of the pattern um, 
so amazing. And if you, if you need the pat, if you need the support or not, it's fun to just cast on with Stephen and get going with him, um, talking to you the whole way. It's really really lovely. Um, <clears throat> I am going to put a picture here uh, of Stephen West, and uh, after the picture. I'm going to show you my work. If you don't want to see what the twist and turns looks like, at least the beginning of it, um, I'm going to put a timestamp right here so you can skip ahead to um, avoid seeing uh, what the, what this clue looks like. Although by the time this video comes out, I'm sure a lot of you will have seen it or knit it. Um, but anyway, consider yourself warned. All right, are you ready? <clears throat> Here it is, the first clue of twists and turns. So we're using a lot of the main color yarn, in this case mine is peach, and a contrast color, in this case mine is this gray color. And we have to do a number of different repeats. So I have done one, two, three, four. There needs to be 14. Yeah, Mr. West. Um, anyway, this is the beginning of it. And then all of these little, these little interesting sections here um, get a special treatment that looks like this. And you just basically, I'll, I'll uh, show you what I'm doing. Just taking this little thing and pulling it through here. I'm trying not to be too descriptive so if people are looking away, they aren't having things ruined. So we're just doing this, pulling through like that. And isn't that pretty? That's going to happen to all of these little loopy sections. So I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes from here. It's definitely using techniques that I have never used before. Um, and I'm not sure that I've seen this done before, but it's really interesting, super textural. Um, very cool. And that's the thing about Stephen West knit alongs is that you can always be guaranteed of something new and interesting. Um, and probably something you've never done before. So that is my clue one. Um, and if you stuck with me this long, I'm gonna put up another picture so that people will know that they can look back. Ready? Here we go. We have survived the episode of construction. Uh, thank you for so much for sticking with me um, through bobcats and beepy noises. Um, I do appreciate it, and I appreciate all of you. A couple of episodes ago, I announced that I'd be doing a giveaway, um, and so I'd like to announce the winner of that giveaway right now. Um, I took all of the different um, comments that everyone had left on the 50th episode, um, I put them in a number a random number generator, and I came out with number 29, which was Heather Evertson. Heather, you have won this lovely sock set called Double Double by Polka Dot Creek. You have won some of their lovely wool wash in the Lumberjack scent and some bulby stitch markers to keep track of all of your knitting. Um, Heather, I hope that you will contact me at jolienknitsalot at gmail.com. And if any of the rest of you uh, who are not Heather Evertson would like to contact me there, please feel free. I'd love to hear from you. Um, Heather, I'll be asking you to send me your address so that I can send this lovely package out to you. Um, thank you so much for knitting with me um, and sticking with me through a noisy episode. I do appreciate you. In the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be trying to keep up with Mr. West Steven, what are you doing? I'm really hoping that um, some of the upcoming clues are a little bit smaller so that I can feel like I have some breathing room. This clue one seems a little bit, uh, not overwhelming, but it just seems like a lot of knitting. So uh, I don't know about you, um, but I had forgotten how much knitting can be involved in a Steven West midlong, but that's okay. I signed up for it and it's gonna be fun. In the next couple of weeks, I hope you have some time to crunch some leaves under your shoes or to watch the flowers bloom if you're living someplace where it's spring. I hope that you have some time to give thanks for the things around you 
It's Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend, and I'm very grateful for my family, my friends, my knitting, and I'm grateful for all of you. So in the next couple of weeks, I hope you find time to do the things that you like to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.